from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and welcome to a special presentation of Cube Conversation here from our Boston area studio. Happy to welcome back to the program uh, from Clear Sky Data, Ellen Rubin uh, is the CEO, and Laz Vekuridis, who is the CTO. Laz and Ellen, thanks so much for joining us. Hi, Stu. Nice Hi. to be back. All right. Thanks so, for having us. Always talk, good to talk to a local company. Uh, when we, we talk about uh, technology, I was actually in the Seaport District uh, earlier the, uh, recently, and uh, you know, there's a lot happening in the space. Uh, as we, we know, it doesn't all happen uh, in Seattle for the cloud and Silicon Valley uh, for all the, all the VCs. So, Ellen, I've been speaking uh, with, with your company since uh, it, it was it was the stealth early mode. days in yeah. stealth mode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first time I met you in person was at the Amazon reInvent show. So, uh, still one of the focal points of, of the cloud and everything happening there. Uh, but give us the update. You've got some new funding, some new partnerships. Uh, Tell us what's happening with Clear Sky. Absolutely, and, and really happy to be back. So, uh, yeah, we've been, uh, you know, Laz and I have been building this company together. We started in 2013 with the, uh, you know, sit in a room with a whiteboard. But the company has really been um, actively funded and, you know, kind of building customers and our service offering since 2014. And um, we've just seen a tremendous amount of growth, especially in the last year. So um, we're excited to be able to share that we are raising a $20 million, um, funding round. Um, and it includes some new investors, a strategic investor, as well as uh, some of our existing investors from General Catalyst and Highland and Polaris. Um, so it's very uh, important for us, but it's also great for our customers because it gives us a chance to now be um, in more places and have more people on our team to really grow and add to the support and the operations of what we're doing. So that's kind of part A, um, and we're really looking forward to doing that. We've added a head of our um, sales uh, organization, our chief revenue officer, uh, Roger Cummings, and so we've really kind of uh, filled out our team and are growing as a company overall. Um, so that's kind of part A. So, so yeah, congratulations on the numbers. The, the other piece, you know, I, I think back to the, the first discussions we had um, when you talk about you know, living in a lot, lots of environments and how do you help customers? Uh, there was somebody that you're partnering with now that I believe came up in that first discussion uh, because they've got, you know, one of the largest global footprints on the planet that I'm aware of. Indeed. So, yeah, also today we're announcing our partnership with Equinix. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we've actually been working, we've been talking with Equinix since we were in stealth mode and we've been working with them um, over the past several years already in a couple of locations. And we can talk in a lot of detail about, uh, you know, sort of where the, the great alignment and fit is. But the news for us is that we're now going to be able to really expand the reach of our service across the rest of the United States. So we're going to triple the number of locations and we're going to be, you know, basically anywhere our customers need us to be. Um, as you know, we are a metro-based service, so it's very important from a latency and an access that, uh, that we be in more locations. And we see it as basically a great jumping off for uh, filling out the initial vision of being across the United States and now starting to expand outside. Yeah, that's great. Last, let, let's pull you in here because sure. if we look at the, the data piece of it, we understand that you know, latency is clearly important. That's the conversation we've had uh, you know, back in the storage world right. for, for a long time. Uh, data has gravity. It, it's <laughs> tough to move it. And, uh, you know, having some locality is, is super important. So what would what we first say, just for, for people that aren't as familiar with the company, just give us, you know, the thumbnail architecturally and tell us what you've been seeing update wise from a technology standpoint. Sure. So uh, our, uh, our technology is really a, a metro based network. Uh, so we deliver uh, caching services on the edge to make uh, all of the, the resources, specifically data management resources uh, that are far away appear as if they're nearby. Now, one of the problems is you know with the clouds is that they're only in certain locations. So unless you're in Asheville, Virginia, or you happen to be in the Pacific Northwest, you have a latency problem. Uh, and so uh, as a result, uh, some certain types of applications aren't going to work well. Uh, what we've built is really uh, an edge-based data management network. We uh, provide uh, high-performance file and block services uh, to systems at the edge that leverage the cloud for their backends. And so as a result, you get all of the economics of the cloud and the flexibility that you get uh, with those types of services, but you uh, get the experience of enterprise class functionality and capabilities, and it's nearby. So you, you don't miss uh, any of the things that you are kind of used to. All right. Lads, I want you to help explain something. When you say edge, what does that mean to you and your customers? Because 
there are service provider edges. There are kind of the IoT end devices edges. There's some things in between there. So, so what specifically so, are you helping with? This is true. It's actually, uh, you know, it's really interesting. So we have a very specific definition of edge. We call it the data center edge, uh, and uh, hence our, our alignment with Equinix. Uh, they are, you know, in these metro facilities. Uh, when you look at our architecture, we're either uh, – putting uh, a, an edge appliance either in uh, an Equinix facility uh, or in a customer facility and then tethering it to the Equinix facility. And so uh, that last 100 or so miles around uh, an Equinix facility is our edge. Uh, and that is uh, that is going to be our definition. Now, that can change over time, just like everything else in the cloud changes, uh, because we basically have built software that can run in any type of a Linux environment with some amount of connectivity. But, uh, you know, in our, in our current market push, our edge is really the data center edge. Okay. Yeah, Alan, I, I love that. That really fits into discussions I've been having a lot uh, over the last year or so. Um, when people talk about hybrid cloud, when they talk about multi-cloud, it's, you know, they're using lots of SaaS. They're usually using more than one public cloud provider, and sure. then they have their own resources. And the, their data center oftentimes is a, you know, Rack and Equinix and leveraging things like uh, the Direct Connect from Amazon, the, the equivalent for, for Google and Microsoft are, you know, expanding those, those definitions. Bring us inside. What are you hearing from customers? I'd love to hear, you know, what you can share about, you know, specific customers or in general, uh, you know, what's the need that they have and, and where you fit into all of it? Yeah, no, you're totally uh, on point for what we see every day, which is, you know, we deal with medium and large enterprises. So our customers are in healthcare, they're in financial services, they're in uh, the legal services and also um, in managed uh, service providers now as a, a newer uh, market for us. So we have customers that include companies like Partners Healthcare, Mass General Hospital, Nuance Communications. Um, we've just added Unitas Global as a, a managed service provider, um, Special Olympics as a customer. Customer, and then some regional uh, hedge firms and uh, and, and uh, law services um, like Miles and Stockbridge. So what you can kind of see is that we have this really nice um, set of experiences that are not just you know what is you know Facebook doing or what is State Street doing, but we kind of. Uh, have a broad range of what CIOs and heads of IT are really struggling with. And it's exactly what you're saying, which is the edge to a customer it very much depends on how they're thinking about where their applications are going to run. And our philosophy is, don't worry about it, we've got you covered. Your data is going to be you know, high performance, low latency, totally protected, and you can access it from wherever you need to. But for a lot of customers, honestly, we, we've seen everything, and you know, I won't embarrass anybody uh, specifically. But you know, there are still some kind of scary old data centers out there. There are server closets that are acting like data centers. People still have things in their buildings, um, and then you've got everything to like the world class Equinix Colo that is you know in Ashburn or whatever, and. And then people are, you know, obviously trying to adopt multiple shades and flavors of public cloud. And, you know, I just was out at a customer yesterday where the CIO was talking to us about the fact that they had grown through a tremendous amount of acquisition. So they've got one of everything. And then the cloud for them was a bunch of people did a bunch of things in Amazon five years ago. Then they decided to standardize on Azure. They don't really know why they standardized on Azure. Then they realized that that was not actually the answer for all their problems. And then they started to think about how Google might actually be a much better fit because of some of the analytics work they're trying to do. And by the way, they've got data centers all over the world. That is a very typical scenario that we see every day. And for the customers, um, hedging their bets and not being locked into anything is really, really important to them because the applications keep evolving and new things are getting, in some ways, built for the cloud. But sometimes the edge actually still is critical, right, in terms of where the actual physical source systems are. Yeah, so I would say the, the elephant in the room is that kind of how do I get my arms around this multi-cloud environment? And there's not one company that's going to solve, you know, all of these issues I've had. And, and even if they know, did, yeah. would you really put everything in one cloud? Probably you wouldn't. Well, well right. But it, it's the, you know, okay, I've, I've got all of these clouds out there and all of these things. I have licensing issues I have to worry about. I have identity management I have to worry about. Uh, there's the overall management of it. Uh, and it seems... Primarily, it's the networking piece that you're helping with. Maybe explain a little bit more, uh, you know, as public sure. comes to you as to, you know, that elephant there, you know, it's clear sky data, 
we solve your networking challenge for multi-cloud, you know, and it's more than just that. Right. Uh, so, uh, you, you know, it, it's sometimes embarrassingly, I, I actually uh, started my career in the uh, networking space. And so, uh, you know, a lot. It, it, it's OK. I, I, I did, too. And so when uh, when Ellen and I started talking about uh, what we wanted to do, we were really focused on networking. Uh, you know, I, maybe I had enough of storage. Uh, and so, uh, you know, a lot of uh, what we discovered was that uh, the network is an extremely uh, sort of uh, you know, undersold part of the overall cloud strategy of any company. If you really want to go to the cloud, this is really about moving huge amounts of data back and forth from these locations. And so we've built a very, very high performance uh, one hop network from our pops uh, right to uh, all of the various uh, you know, regions of the, the public clouds. So what this basically means uh, for our customers is that uh, they don't have to worry about the internet, they don't have to worry about the security that they need to set up uh, in order to get into the cloud, and the amount of throughput that we can get through is really astonishing. So we've really built a system that can maximize this this network pipe. So uh, you know, just uh, even our smallest customers can move in excess of twenty terabytes a day back and forth from the cloud. So this this becomes a really really interesting uh, you know solution if you're if you have a lot of source systems or you have a lot of data to move, we can outrun that Amazon truck. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so so it, it, I want you to, you know, I think back five years ago, I heard Equinix, some of the other yeah. large data centers, they were like, oh, well, we're just going to give you a cloud marketplace and there'll be all these services. And if you need to access something, you know, we'll just be able to throw a 10 gig wire between some of these uh, connections. Uh, it sounded really good, but it sounds like you're helping to fill a gap. Maybe, maybe explain what that is. Well, so most of the the um, networking pieces are uh, actually very expensive, very complicated to, to set up, first of all. Uh, so you also have port charges and all sorts of, of um, high availability issues that you need to resolve with each one of the clouds. Additionally, although they are sort of on demand, uh, you know, you, you're not using all this bandwidth all the time and you don't know when you're going to need it. Uh, what, what we've done on the network is to make it possible for you to utilize, you know, 40 gigabits of throughput, uh, our 40 gigabits of throughput in, into the cloud at pretty much whenever you need it. Uh, so, um, so for example, latency from Boston to, uh, to Amazon East for us, 11 milliseconds. Uh, for most people, if they don't have direct connect at, at some exorbitant price, they, they're, they're going to end up uh, experiencing in the hundreds of milliseconds if they're going over the internet. So uh, that and the bandwidth guarantee uh, is, you know, you, you think you have a one uh, gigabit internet connection, but that's not really what all the elements uh, along your path are going to provide you. So there is a lot of variability and we make that all go away. Uh, we make the management go away. We make the security issues go away. Uh, and it's so totally seamless. You just need to connect into our, our network with our edge. Uh, you, you know, just It's as if the cloud really isn't there. Uh, and if you need to access resources in the cloud, we can you know, bring your data to uh, EC2 and you can connect uh, instances to it. So it's the, the whole process of moving things back and forth is so seamless and transparent. Uh, you just don't manage it. It's all uh, sort of a byproduct of the architecture. I was just going to add, you know, Equinix <clears throat> invested early and bet early on becoming a cloud hub. And, you know, this idea of having their cloud exchange and a lot of the other services that are plugged in is a tremendous value to customers. But what we do see is that, you know, there are still a lot of customers out there, and I'm sure this will persist for a while, where there's still even yet further distributed last mile issues and customers are moving into, you know, Equinix and, and co-location sites for all the benefits that they bring. And we take, you know, full advantage of, of that and help drive that um, from our side. But we also see that that there are things that are just not moving and need to stay put. And it's either because of legacy reasons, compliance reasons, they don't want to invest to replatform things. There are a lot of reasons that are out there. And because we both come from the enterprise infrastructure world, that does not scare us. So we understand that what you have to do is you have to meet the customer where they live, right? And you have to make it easy and accessible. And as Laz is describing, kind of a turnkey situation where however your application wants to run and be uh, best you know, situated, we're going to make sure that your data is available to you. Yeah, you, you bring up some great points there. Uh, a line I've used uh, many times recently is uh, there was the promise that, you know, cloud was going to be simple and cheap, right. uh, and it turns out to be neither of those. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you see as some of the biggest challenges, Ellen, if we start with you maybe, is to, you know, what, what are your customers facing? What, what are you 
excited about that's, that's actually made progress the last few years? And what do we still need to do as an industry as a whole? Well, I always have to say this, and of course, it makes me just feel completely so old. But, you know, I've been in the cloud since 2008, right? My last company, Cloud Switch, you know, was kind of at that, you know, early, okay, there's a, there's a thing, it's called the cloud. It happens to be Amazon, but there'll be other clouds too. So you have to say, fast forwarding 10 years, um, a lot of really good progress has been made. And it is for sure the case that now when you talk to um, enterprise customers and to the CIOs, they're in the cloud, they've adopted the cloud, the cloud is in their mental picture of where things are going to be. They've accepted the fact that developer groups are already in the cloud and have been for a very long time and that it's there. It's part of their portfolio now to, to make sure it's protected and highly available and compliant. So I think that is progress. I also, the best thing that ever happened was I don't have to convince people that the cloud is more secure than what they're doing on-prem because everybody kind of knows that. So that's good news. We don't have to have that conversation 20 times again, et cetera. But <clears throat> what I do see that's surprising to me is that still some of the fundamental problems are still problems. So um, getting my data into the cloud, you'd think, come on, that we, we've got lots of solutions, tools, and toolkits and stuff like that, but it's still a very major problem. Networking, of course, being a key issue for customers. I don't want to have to roll out a bunch of new lines. I don't want to have to hire a snowmobile. I don't want to have to, you know, rebuild everything from scratch. So that that is still, I think, shows up more than I would have guessed. Right now, what we see is there's a lot of focus on operational things in terms of how to optimize what turned out to be the high costs of the cloud. Every one of our customers knows that if you pull data back from the cloud, that's not good. So that they learned that, they found that out, and then they were kind of uh, a little surprised probably the first time the bill came in and it was really high. So this idea of having tools that allow optimization of using the cloud more cost effectively and figuring out which cloud is going to be more cost effective based on the access patterns, th there's more um, awareness of it, but there's still a lot of struggling with that. Lars, well, would love your comments on that. Well, there, um, you know, the, the the whole notion of cost optimization is deeply embedded in our technology, uh, and it's it, you know every time we have a conversation with a customer, the first thing they ask, uh, is, you know, they ask about uh, egress fees. Is it really just the same price no matter how much I use it? Uh, you know, and and they think about all of these different like uh, things about IOPS, for example, because you know the, the cloud providers have sort of um, indoctrinated the the market to think about what their IOPS needs are uh, in order to get them into the appropriate price point. So there's a lot of optimization there that I still don't think that the the customers really grok. How many people really understand how many IOPS a particular application really needs and how many should I buy? And if I buy the wrong number, oh my God, everything is messed up. And so uh, the ability to to uh, solve those types of problems for people uh, in, in a way where they, it becomes a non-issue is still... You know, it, it, certainly we're doing it for storage, but there are all sorts of issues just like that for compute. There are all sorts of issues like that for networking as well. Uh, and so anyone who's trying to build an application on top of this platform really needs to think about those things. Um, you know, and so, you know, it, thankfully, you know, our customers don't have to worry about a whole slew of things because we've actually arbitraged out all of the, the you know, unusual aspects of the tariffs of network providers versus cloud providers, access fees and transaction fees, etc. But uh, anyone who's doing this needs to think about this uh, in, in a very, um, very analytical way, uh, which I don't think IT has been used to up until now. They overbuy, as you know, uh, you know and, uh, and they continue to overbuy. And as long as uh, there's a uh, there, there's no complaints about performance and there are no complaints about, uh, you know, excesses in cost, everything is fine. Uh, that's not how the cloud works. Uh, and uh, I think we're getting to the point now where uh, any serious move to the cloud is going to require a lot more thinking and a lot more analysis. And, uh, you know, because it, you're the, there's still a mentality that the cloud is cheaper. And then when people try it, they, they, they quickly realize, like, oh, my God. Look at this bill, you know, and it's forever. It's not like you could just shut everything off. Uh, it's every month. It's not like you just spent forty thousand dollars in a month. It's and you could shut it off. And so it's um it's a difficult problem, uh, and I don't think IT is prepared in general. Yeah, I think one of the things that we've seen at ClearSky over the past several years is the willingness that customers have to use the cloud for data protection. I think when we started, it was sort of you know everything's going to the cloud, the whole thing. Damn the torpedoes full speed ahead, right? And I think a lot of what people are actually doing is archival, backup DR. Those are comfortable. State of the industry is sort of that there should be a, a connection between the on, you know, wherever on-prem is for the customer and then out to the cloud for the things that are the longer tail kinds of things. The problem is, what if you have to pull the data back? 
So these are, you know, things we think about every day. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, I want to give you the final word. $20 million raised, uh, the strategic partnership uh, with Equinix that's going to increase availability. What does this mean to your customers and to the company Clear Sky as we look forward? Well, I think, you know, one of the things that's true about the fact that we are a network centric kind of a company is that the power of the network is in how many access points you have. So what this means is that customers who are national and then global have more opportunity now to be able to access things with ClearSky and to grow and expand with us, which is great. We've seen tremendous expansion business this year, really, like a huge percentage of our business has already expanded at least once, if not multiple times with us. And that begs a lot of questions. Well, okay, that's great. You're here with us in this metro. How do we, you know, get across the rest of, uh, you know, our locations? So I think that's very valuable. And also, obviously, from our side, making sure that we can handle the care and, you know, support that our customers are expecting. We're fully managed 24 by 7. So the the bar is high, right? You know, this is not the, here's a toolkit in the cloud, go figure it out. This is, we take care of everything, we're an SLA to you, and that's it. And obviously, the customer wants to see that scale. Well, Ellen, last congratulations on on all the progress that you made, and uh, always great to catch up with you on all the updates. Great to see you. All right, and thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out thecube.net for all of our coverage, including uh, we're at all the cloud shows, a huge (laughs) show at Amazon reInvent at the end of November. Be sure to tune into that and everything else. Feel free to reach out if you've got uh, questions for our team or themes that you'd like us to cover, other events we should be at. Uh, I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.